what are the ways that companies and their boards ought to be thinking about board independence? Mm -hmm. Training on conflicts of interest and on the standards for recusing oneself or mm -hmm. disclosing conflicts as they arise, all of this should be, should be explained in some detail by the general counsel or, or mm -hmm. others, uh, other counselors to the corporation so that the board members really do understand their obligations. Mm -hmm. Do typical boards do that very well today? Well, all boards have codes of conduct, uh, so I think the documentation is in place. What I think is often lacking is the training, mm -hmm. because I think directors may often feel these codes pertain really to the employees and the staff and the rank and file, uh, and yet the directors need very specific training on how these conflict rules relate to their own decision making. Mm -hmm. Now, you say you're also concerned, I've heard you talk about being concerned about some of that documentation, specifically the D&O insurance forms that many companies ask their the, directors. The D&O questionnaires. The questionnaires. The questionnaires. These questionnaires uh, really focus narrowly on financial entanglements, mm -hmm. and they don't, they don't really solicit information that would allow the board and its mm -hmm. advisors to make an informed judgment about some of the other factors we've talked about in previous programs. Mm -hmm. Some of these social relationships, familial relationships, philanthropic relationships, uh, and business relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't really tease out that information. So it's quite important that the, the DNO questionnaires be enlarged to, to uh, obtain that information from directors. Is there a way of asking more generally how whether a particular director is beholden in some way that wouldn't show up on those uh, DNO questionnaires well, to it to another board member or to a member. Yeah, of right now I don't think many DNO questionnaires actually ask about relationships a director might At have all. with other directors. Got it. And that's that's an important issue uh, mm -hmm. because this issue of whether one is beholden to another really the, 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 is dependent on the type of relationship that the directors have with one another. One of the main issues of public trust, of course, is whether the, the board itself is independent of the CEO. And right. this question of who's beholden to the CEO for being appointed to the board, for yes. other kinds of relationships. Can a, a DNO questionnaire ever get at that? Can we ever solicit the kind of information that would help us the public determine whether that was well. True? The DNO questionnaire isn't intended to be conclusive. I yes. mean, it, it's not uh, to to make any determinations. It's just providing information that the board would then use to make mm -hmm. its own determination. But you touch on a really important point, Kirk, and I think that is that there's there's more involved than just the board's own determination of independence. Mm -hmm. There's a, there's the, uh, the the public trust in the organization is really at stake here, mm -hmm. and and that trust depends not only on an understanding and confidence that the board has procedures to deal with these conflicts, mm -hmm. but also is, is sensitive to appearances of conflict. There's, there's some interesting things going on in terms of uh, conflicts of interest and uh, public attitudes, even judicial attitudes towards that. And I know you've, uh, yes, you've no, been interested in, in some of that. What, what do you see happening that that uh, uh, are new types of conflicts or new concerns mm -hmm. about conflict that are emerging uh, in uh, corporate governance today? Well, I, you know, I'm looking beyond uh, just the, the corporate world. Uh, in, in the scientific world, for example, um, many of the medical journals have been heavily criticized mm -hmm. for failing to, um, to identify that some of the contributors to their publications have had their research funded by some of the corporations mm -hmm. whose, who, whose uh, success is in some way dependent on the conclusions mm -hmm. of these scientific studies. Uh, and, and I think now most journals are requiring that that information mm -hmm. be disclosed. Again, disclosure yes. uh, is the antiseptic here. Judge Alsup, who is one of the federal judges sitting in San Francisco mm -hmm. in the Northern District of California, in, in a case involving uh, Oracle and Google, mm -hmm. um, has recently asked that both parties, Google and Oracle, submit a list of those individuals who have received money from either corporation um, for commenting on the case publicly. So for example, a blogger. If that individual has received money from one of the parties, the judge is asking that this information be disclosed. Because right now, that's not the case. 
And is is the presumption that the blogger may influence the legal process itself or the determination in the case? I, I think that is. But I think this is perhaps a first step towards a move towards greater disclosure about where uh, uh, these these uh, uh, studies or opinions might be uh, tainted somewhat mm -hmm. by uh, financial interests. And so that broader concept of conflict of interest is is affecting all aspects of society and undoubtedly as it evolves will change the way boards deals with it. Oh, I think so. Yeah. And, and once again, uh, the, the, the way one deals with this is disclosure. Mm -hmm. Because with disclosure then people can make up their own mind about how much weight to give a particular mm -hmm. study or article uh, in, the, uh, in considering the matter. Or blogger. Or blogger. Thank you very <laughs> much, Dan. <laughs>